everybody, meteorologist Mike Slifer here. Just wanted to give you guys an update here on our streaming platforms to talk a little bit about what's going on with the storm right now and what to expect as the evening goes on. First and foremost, let's start with some of the snow totals. And I want to address the elephant in the room here. It's tough to measure these snow totals. We've been dealing with blowing and drifting snow all day. People have sent me pictures where half of their deck is completely bare and half their deck is two and a half or three feet of snow built up in a drift. And I think that that's something that we're going to be uh, dealing with here as the evening goes on. But here's some of the totals we've gotten so far. 14 inches in Eastport, 13 and a half in Herman, 11 in Topsom, 9.6 in China, 9 and a half in Belmont. And these numbers will continue to climb. Uh, it looks like we are going to be dealing with some of the heaviest snow actually that we've seen so far this storm as these snow bands keep on pivoting through. I also want to mention here that we are um, dealing with a little bit of wind behind the system. As wind shifts to be out of the northwest, we will likely see that continue to pick up a little bit, and it could be enough to re-blow snow back into areas that have already been cleared. Some of the wind gusts we've received so far, 77 miles an hour in Robinston down east, very impressive. Rye, New York, Rye, New Hampshire, rather, uh, along the seacoast, 75 miles an hour, 71 miles an hour, Cape Elizabeth, 59 at the Portland Jetport, 55 in East Surrey and that is making it feel quite cold outside. I said this earlier today and I stand by it. This is one of the coldest feeling winter storms that we've had in quite some time. Usually when we get winter storms like this, there's a band of warmer air that tries to sneak in. We end up with some wintry mix or some rain and temperatures are split between say the mid to upper 20s and the low 30s. Air temperatures themselves have been in the teens and single digits all day. When you factor in the strong wind gusts, it feels even colder than that. And that's exactly what we've been uh, dealing with here. And I think that's something that we will continue to deal with overnight tonight. And it likely stays cold into the morning tomorrow too. And I think that Monday morning will be another morning where air temperatures are below zero for everybody. Current wind gusts behind this picking up again out of the north and northwest. Uh, still gusting to 26 miles an hour in Freiburg, 45 miles an hour in Bangor, 40 in Augusta, 39 miles an hour in Callis. You can actually pick out the wind directions here showing the low pressure northeast in Calais, north in Bangor and Augusta, northwest at Portsmouth, New Hampshire and Kittery, Maine. And if we zoom out a bit here, areas in southern New England and even New York State that were dealing with some pretty impressive and strong wind gusts earlier have started to subside a bit. And I think that's a trend that we will see. But again, we, even with wind out of the northwest like this, we'll still be dealing with gusts to 25 or 30 miles an hour, maybe even a little bit stronger. This is just one impressive snow band. This is the type of snow band that we've been waiting for all day. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with snowfall rates of one to two inches per hour still. First and foremost, let's start with York County where drier air is starting to subside. If you are in Kittery, the Berwicks, Elliott, up to Sanford, you are likely dealing with the drier air at this point. The snow is tapered off a bit, but it is still dumping as you get into northern sections of uh, your county toward the Oxford Hills and toward Freiburg and Brownfield along 302 there. And that snow band is even stronger and heavier through Androscoggin County into parts of Sagadahawk County and the mid coast. Take a look at Lewiston Auburn to Augusta. All those dark blues, New Gloucester up to Turner, up to Farmington. It is just the dumping right now. One to two plus inches an hour, reduced visibility on the roads and certainly coating roadways immediately as soon as they end up underneath this band. And that's impacting parts of the mid coast as well. I had a couple of people in Topsum who told me that it is just ripping snow. And I do expect that to continue as this band keeps on pivoting through Maine before eventually moving off to the east. We've got renewed snowfall down east now. If you're in Bar Harbor, if you're in Machias, uh, if you're in Ellsworth, you're starting to see flakes again. Same idea far down east too, toward Eastport, Lubeck, and Denny'sville. We've got some snow back on the radar. And again, once the snow bands pivot back through, we will see an increase in snow totals here. Bangor right now may be getting a little bit of a break, but it's going to be brief. And here's the northern end, northern end of that just really impressive snow band from Harmony to Dover, Foxcroft, uh, LaGrange, up to Millinocket and Patton. We've got some pretty heavy snow falling right now too. Snowfall rates again approaching one to two inches per hour. And because of that visibility has dropped yet again to a quarter mile. A half mile visibility in Portland right now, but a quarter mile Wisconsin, Lewiston, Augusta, Waterville, Millinocket, and Bar Harbor. We're sitting at about a half mile visibility in Bangor. 
And I want to mention something here that Todd mentioned earlier. A lot of emergency crews and things like that are strapped right now because of COVID. If you are able to, it's a good idea to get out, shovel out the uh, fire hydrants in your neighborhood, help out your elderly neighbors, anybody that might need a little bit of help. The good news about this snow is that it's very easy to move, so it's not tough for you to move. The bad news is that that means the wind can move it too, and we've been dealing with blowing snow all day. Some people have gotten lucky where the wind took care of clearing their driveways for them but there are certainly a lot of other people who are opening the door to two foot or higher snow drifts. So always good to lend a helping hand in these situations and make sure you do bundle up because it's cold out there. The storm is starting to show signs of weakening a little bit and will clear out from west to east. By 11 o'clock, we've got everything clearing out in the western half of the state. Um, and we still will have some heavier snow bands rotating through eastern areas and central Maine from Bangor and down east. The temperatures mostly in the single digits falling below zero across northern and western parts of Maine and New Hampshire. We're entirely clear by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, but it's still going to be a bit breezy out of the northwest. So blowing snow still could pose some issues for people who have plans to travel. Largest recent storms haven't been all that impressive if you're in Bangor. Uh, the last time we had double digit snow totals before today in Bangor was in March of 2018. Portland was December of 2020. Um, but I think that this one is probably going to be one that a lot of us remember for quite some time. Even if the snow totals aren't all that impressive, it's going to be for the fact that we had a legitimate blizzard verify across most of the state of Maine. Not much else to talk about behind this tomorrow, except for the cold air moving back in and the breeze. It's going to be cold on Monday, likely below zero to start off the day and temperatures will only make it into the 20s. But by Tuesday, we start to see some signs of maybe some milder air moving back in to parts of New England. And I think that by Wednesday, we could be talking about high temperatures again in the 30s and 40s. So not too bad. Marine forecast tomorrow, seas will start off rough 9 to 12 feet, receding a little bit 7 to 10 feet in the afternoon. Northwest winds gusting to 40 knots, but notice hurricane force wind warnings are still in effect for the marine uh, coastline until 10 o'clock tonight. Seven day forecast though certainly shows that warming trend from 20 degrees tomorrow to 40 degrees Thursday inland with maybe just a few showers out there. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. Um, but inland areas could be dealing maybe with more mix than rain on Thursday. We'll see how it all works out. By Friday, though, we are certainly going to trend to uh, be a bit colder. The afternoon may not be that cold, but it's going to really cool off overnight Friday into Saturday. And Saturday looks cold yet again. So that's what we've got going on here. I know that there's still some power outages out there. Make sure you've got a way to stay warm tonight, a way to stay safe and uh, we'll be here to keep you updated. But we've also got crews live in the field still. Meteorologist Tyler Catteret is standing by and he is ready to show us what's going on right now in the snow. Tyler, take it away. Hey there, Mike. Good evening and good evening to everybody uh, joining us for uh, the live stream here. Uh, our original plan was to give you a first hand look at road conditions uh, with Stormy. Um, some technical issues with that, but we were able to, to put together the uh, live report here uh, just off of Route 1 in Saco, uh, not in, uh, you know, in the car, but uh, outside of the car instead. And uh, plenty to get to here. Uh, first off, uh, the biting cold with the wind. Uh, it's freezing out here right now. Uh, if you have any kind of exposed skin, the skin on my face, we've been out here probably five, 10 minutes and uh, it's, uh, you know, you're just frozen. So if you can just stay inside, a lot of you probably watching this, on the couch, uh, you know, maybe a, a beverage in hand or a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. That's the way to do it. Just stay inside this evening. Uh, let the plow crews get out there and, and start cleaning up some of this stuff. We're still seeing, I'd say, moderate snow uh, here in the Saco area. I know Mike was just going over uh, where some of those bands are setting up. And uh, we've had some heavy snow here for a couple of hours now, really uh, adding on to the total uh, an inch or two an hour, I think, uh, pretty safe to say here for the past couple of hours. Uh, so really seeing a dramatic yeah, increase in how much snow we have. Uh, in this area and again the winds as well still blustery we were down by the coast uh, near Camp Ellis a couple of hours ago that was just downright brutal uh, this is you know maybe not quite downright brutal but pretty darn close uh, still dealing with that wind the sideways snow uh, coming by there right in front of the, the camera you can see that in front of me here uh, I did want to start just by uh, kind of showing you guys what we're talking about with the blowing and drifting really tough to get an accurate measurement of exactly how much snow we have, especially in this open area off of Route 1, because the wind just comes through here, it picks it up, it blows it all over the place. But check out, I mean, some of these snow drifts, 
here were like up to my, you know, close to my knees. I was just walking by one, uh, you know, by a stormy that was even higher than this. So, you know, you know can really start are, to see piled up, you know, look at that blowing and drifting right there. It's a couple feet of snow uh, in this drift. And again, important to note, though, you know, we're not talking two feet of accumulation, but this snow drift is a great example of how it can really pile up when the wind picks it up. Uh, I did want to spin around and get the camera over here real quick. It might be a little bit dark. Um, but this is an example too, like right next to this tree, you get the wind coming in, it kind of scoops out the snow there. Uh, you know, zero inches of snow right next to this tree. So <laughs> that's blowing and drifting uh, at its finest. You're seeing it firsthand here with this system. Uh, again, blizzard uh, criteria met really up and down the coastline here in southern and central Maine up to the mid coast. And certainly, um, you know, we have felt that firsthand uh, out here. I did want to take a couple minutes too, just to point out, I know we can't uh, show you the road conditions firsthand. And I know you know, we sound like a broken record, right? Just don't go out and drive in this. It's not safe. You know, you hear it every storm. Um, I do want to point out, I've been doing storm coverage in Southern Maine for, for a good good while now. Um, the road conditions right now on Route 1 here in Saco, some of the worst I've ever seen. And we're driving in Stormy, and Stormy's got four-wheel drive. Uh, still a challenge. We've seen plow trucks going by uh, with their hazard lights on really slow. And I mean, those guys, they drive in, in just about any conditions. Um, really kind of close to whiteout conditions at times when the, the winds pick up and you get that blowing and drifting combined with um, what we're seeing for snow still falling. And you really just can't distinguish, you know, the lanes of the road, the, the edges of the road we were driving over and, you know, you got snow banks that are pretty close. So uh, the bottom line, the reason why I'm saying this, again, I think most people watching probably already understand it, but, um, you know, really, if you don't have to go out right now, at least for the next couple of hours, uh, just don't do it. You know, even as the snow starts to wind down here in the coming hours, as Mike was talking about, um, if you don't have to uh, go out, you know, just stay inside for the night and take care of the cleanup tomorrow. Roads will be a lot better by that point. Um, but yeah, Route 1 here in Saco, just, you know, downright, uh, you know, treacherous, really, as we've been, um, you know, navigating up and down a little bit here, taking it really slow, being really safe while we're out on the roads. But uh, again, covered a lot of storms. And uh, we were <laughs> both saying, uh, Jacob, photographer Jacob and I, that uh, it's uh, some of the worst conditions that uh, that we've seen in quite a while. So uh, just something to keep in mind here. Again, just be mindful of that. Um, I'll step aside one more time just to show you a little bit of the backdrop behind me here again. Uh, looking pretty serene, pretty peaceful. Um, I can tell you that it's a biting wind. Um, you still have that sideways snow coming down there, some of those plow trucks going by. Um, and you can see too, anybody that is you know out on the road right now, if you're anywhere near another vehicle, you're getting not only the snow that's blowing and drifting, but also all of that powder that's kicking up um, from those trucks. So again, um, just something to uh, to keep in mind that uh, really, if you don't have to go out, not that you really want to probably, <laughs> but certainly just you know a couple uh, you know a couple of extra hours inside here and just hunker down for uh, the rest of uh, your Saturday evening. Uh, we were just uh, down the road closer to downtown Saco a few uh, a few minutes ago, and you know it's a big storm. Uh, the the Dunkin' Donuts there. Uh, was closed and usually a 24 hour one but you know when the dunks is uh <laughs> is closed up for the storm even this late in the day i feel like that's uh that's when you know so that's the latest here uh if you're uh you're check on the conditions in the Saco area the southern main area uh we'll send it back now to uh, i believe mike uh in the studio with uh with more Thanks for that report. Um, I would just like to go on record here and say that Tyler has been doing an awesome job helping us out today. It's been really great to have him in the mix. Um, and, you know, it's also selfishly nice because for once I get to be in here while he's out braving the elements. Before we wrap this Facebook Live up, the big question, of course, is what were people expecting for snow? This is the snow map that we've been showing for the last few days. Um, and, of course, we saw the increase in totals happen. Um, I made that change yesterday morning to bring it inland, but Jess Conley is the one who actually saw that trend coming and did it Thursday evening. At first, I was a little worried that we might be a little bit too high with some of these snowfall totals. Part of the reason is because the snow growth that we had earlier in the day was needles and this actually is a little bit of a cloud physics lesson lesson and basically the way that snow grows in clouds you can have different types of flakes that form needles which literally look like needles don't stack well so it can snow for a long time but it doesn't really pile up and that's what we dealt with a lot this morning however 
As we got into these heavier snow bands late in the afternoon and the evening, we started to mix in more dendrites. That's what you would picture for a more classic snowflake. And I think that extra bit of fluff factor with the dendrites is going to get us into uh, the snowfall range for a lot of the forecasted area. Still keeping my eye on Androscoggin and Kennebec counties especially, where some of the reports have not been all that impressive. Somebody in Leeds told me that they only had three inches of snow. Uh, I got a report in Lisbon of only a few inches, but I'm also starting to hear more reports now that snowfall rates have picked up in those areas. So I'm curious to see where we end up and we'll have our answer here in about five hours or six hours and certainly by tomorrow morning. Some areas down east, those heavy snow bands pivot back through may end up with 20 or so inches by the time all is said and done. But that's all I've got for you updates wise right now. Um, we will be back tonight at 11 o'clock. And of course, I will also be available on social media for any other questions you may have. Thanks everybody who tuned in. Sam Rogers and I will see you again at 11.